Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation. Today we are going to talk about the 4-switch back boost DC-DC converter. So in this video we will see the introduction, then we will explain the different modes of this converter, we will present how to control the converter, we will show a design example, and finally we will perform several LTSPICE simulations to verify the design example. This is the schematic of the 4-switch backboost converter. So we have the input voltage here, we have a branch at this point, and then we have the inductor, we have another branch, and then the output with the filter capacitor and the load. So this is a really interesting converter for many applications. We can say that this is an all-road four-wheel DC-DC converter because it can handle wide voltage gain range. So the converter can handle input voltage higher than the output voltage or similar to the output voltage or even an input voltage below the output voltage. So in reality what we have is three DC-DC converters in one topology. We can implement with this topology a back converter, a boost converter and a back boost converter. Also it's interesting because the converter provides synchronous ratification because we are using four controlled switches so we don't have a diode recovery losses as in regular DC-DC converters implemented with an output diode. So the efficiency of this converter can be very high and it can be applied in many different applications with a wide input and output voltage range. For example, in battery chargers, in UPS applications, in telecommunications applications, and so on. So let's see the different converters that we can implement with this topology. The first one is the back boost operation mode. In order to better understand the control of the converter, we are showing here the signal corresponding to the duty cycle, D, which means that the switch is going to be on during the interval from 0 to DTS. And D' prime is the inverse signal, so it's activated during the interval DTS up to TS. So in the back boost operation mode, what we are doing is to activate switches S1 and S4 with the signal D and switches S2 and S3 with the signal D prime. So during the first interval from 0 to DTS, we are having this switch here closed and this other here closed. So we are applying to the inductor a voltage which is equivalent to the input voltage. So the current is circulating through the inductor and increasing. And then during the other interval from DTS to TS, we are closing this switch S3 and this one here S2. So we are applying to the inductor a voltage which is equal to minus VO, the output voltage. And the current is circulating this way. So as we can see, the operation is equivalent to the back boost converter. With one advantage, even because, as we can see here, the output voltage is going to be the voltage ratio that we have for the back boost converter, which is D over 1 minus D times the input voltage, but we have no sign inversion. So the output voltage has the same sign as the input voltage, and this is a very important advantage, especially when we want to do the closed loop to measure the output voltage and do the closed loop operation. The converter can also operate as a back converter, and for this we only have to apply the signal D to the switch S1, the signal D prime to switch S2 and keep switch S3 continuously on. So we apply one signal here and the switch S4 is continuously open. So we apply a zero signal here to the switch. In this way, if we take a look at the different intervals from zero to DTS, we have that we have this uh, switch closed and this other switch closed. So we are applying to the inductor the voltage VI minus VO. 
which is positive because this is going to be a back converter, so VO is lower than VI. And then during the other interval from DTS to TS, we are closing this switch S2 and the switch S3 is always closed, so we are applying to the inductor the minus the output voltage, minus VO. So, as we can see, this corresponds to the operation of a back converter. The output voltage is going to be equal to the duty cycle, D, times the input voltage, and of course the output voltage is always lower than the input voltage. And finally, this converter can also operate as a boost converter. In this case, we are keeping S1 continuously on with a one signal here and S2 continuously off with a zero signal controlling this switch. We apply the duty cycle to switch S4 and the signal D' prime to the switch S3. So with this, during the first interval from 0 to DTS, we have this switch S1 here closed, we have this other S4 closed, so we are applying the input voltage across the inductor, and during the second interval from DTS to TS, we are having this switch here closed, and this other here S3 closed, so we are applying minus VO minus VI to the inductor. So this is a negative value because the output voltage is going to be always higher than the input voltage because this converter behaves as a boost converter. So the operation, as we can see, is equivalent to a boost converter. The output voltage in continuous conduction mode is going to be 1 over 1 minus D times the input voltage and the output voltage is going to be always higher than the input voltage. This is a comparison among the different operating modes. We have here the back converter. These are the signals that we have for this mode. And of course, because this is a back converter, the output voltage is going to be always lower than the input voltage. Another feature is that we have only two switches commutating, which are S1 and S2. So we are only having switching losses in S1 and S2. We don't have switching losses in S3. In S3 we have only conduction losses and we have no losses in switch S4 because it's continuously open. Also, this converter can operate with the output voltage lower than the input voltage, but if the input voltage and the output voltage are very close, we will need a duty cycle very close to one. And this, as we know, is not possible. So we cannot use this converter in this case when the input voltage and the output voltage are very similar. On the other hand, we have the boost converter. These are the signals that we have. Of course, the output voltage is going to be always higher than the input voltage. Also, we have only two switches commutating. And again, we can't operate with this converter when the output voltage and the input voltage are very similar because the duty cycle that we need will be very close to zero and we cannot get a duty cycle with a very small value. And finally, we have the back boost converter. These are the signals as we have seen and with the back boost converter we can operate with output voltage higher than the input voltage or with an output voltage lower than the input voltage which is an advantage compared with the other two converters. We have now four switches commutating so we are going to have switching losses in the four switches so we can expect lower efficiency for this converter. But another advantage is that we can operate with output voltage very similar to the input voltage because in this case the duty cycle is around 0 0.5. So this is interesting because with the back converter we can operate output voltages lower than the input voltage. With the boost converter we can operate when we want an output voltage higher than the input voltage and with the back boost converter we can operate when we want an output voltage which is close to the input voltage. So as we have said before with this converter and switching from one operating mode to another operating mode we can operate with any ratio of the input voltage and the output voltage. Here we can see a couple of examples 
of how to use this converter. For example, in this case, we have a regulated output voltage. So we are representing here the voltage as a function of time. So the output voltage that we want to obtain is constant. But we have at the input a variable input voltage because, for example, we have a battery at the input and then the battery is going to discharge. So the input voltage is decreasing as shown here. So at the beginning, the input voltage is higher than the output voltage. So we will operate the converter in back mode. In this area here, when the input voltage is close to the output voltage, we will operate the converter in back boost mode. And finally, when the input voltage is much lower than the output voltage, we can operate the converter in boost mode. Of course, we could operate the converter always in back boost mode, but as we have seen, the efficiency is going to be lower. So we are interested in increasing the efficiency, and for this we prefer to operate the converter in back mode for higher input voltages and in boost mode for lower input voltages. So in order to switch from one mode to another mode, we have to detect these voltage levels here and here in order to pass from back mode to back boost mode and from back boost mode to boost mode. And also it's important to use a hysteresis window in order to avoid oscillations between modes. When we are switching from one mode to another mode, if we don't use a hysteresis band, then we have some switching from one mode to another mode and this will generate distortion and malfunction. We can see an example of this application in this video, Introduction to Raspberry Pi Pico Microcontroller Board. In this board, they use this converter in order to supply the microcontroller from a small battery. We can also have this other situation. We have a regulated input voltage but we are going to have a variable output voltage. For example, this is the case of a battery charger. When the battery is discharged, we have a low voltage at the output, and then when we are charging the battery, the voltage increases. So again, we have a range here in which we will operate the converter in back mode. Then in the area when the output voltage and the input voltage are similar, we operate the converter in back boost mode. And finally, when the output voltage voltage is much higher than the input voltage, we can operate the converter in boost mode. Let's talk a little bit more about the control of the converter. Here we have the first example when the input voltage is changing and the output voltage is regulated to a constant value. And here we are representing the value of the duty cycle that we need at each time. So here we have the expressions corresponding to the duty cycle of the back converter, the back boost converter, and the boost converter operating in continuous conduction mode. So starting from this point here, when the input voltage is much higher than the output voltage, we will need a low value of the duty cycle because we are operating with a back converter. And then the duty cycle has to increase up to a maximum value. Then we are switching to the back boost converter. And of course, the two values are not going to be exactly the same. The, the duty cycle that we need uh, to get this voltage ratio with the back converter and with the back boost converter is going to be different. So we need to change to the duty cycle corresponding to the back boost converter. So the duty cycle is going to decrease like this and when we reach this other boundary here we are going to switch to the boost converter so we have to switch again from one value of the duty cycle to another value of the duty cycle which is going to be lower and then the duty cycle in boost mode is going to increase again and so on. So we need to design the closed loop compensator to operate the three converters in the different regions. So this is quite a challenge for this converter because we need to assure that we are going to have a stable operation and with the correct dynamics in the three operating modes. 
and as we know the dynamic response of the three converters, the back converter, the back boost converter and the boost converter is different. So we need to design a compensator that is going to be good in the three situations. Also, we are going to have some perturbations here when changing from one mode to another mode because, of course, we cannot get exactly this quick change of the duty cycle in this point here and in this instant here. So the implementation with analog circuitry can be quite a challenge for this converter. And we can consider for this converter the use of digital control with adaptive compensation because in this case we can change the parameters of the compensator, of the digital compensator from the back converter to the back boost converter and then to the boost converter. So the dynamic response can be optimized in the three different regions. Let's talk a little bit about the efficiency and that we are going to obtain with this converter because it's interesting to see the typical efficiency curve that we are going to obtain. Here we are representing the efficiency as a function of the input voltage and in blue we are showing the efficiency when we are working in the multi-mode operation. So we are operating in the back mode, then in the back boost mode, and then in the boost mode. So in this area here, when the input voltage is higher than the output voltage, we are operating in back mode. We have this window here corresponding to the hysteresis window. So at this point here, we are switching to the back boost mode. Then if the voltage at the input keeps increasing then we will get this value here and then we will switch to the boost mode of operation so in case that the input voltage decreases again then we go this way keeping the hysteresis comparison and then in this area here and then back to the back operation mode so this is the typical curve of the efficiency because you have high efficiency in the back mode and in the boost mode but the efficiency in the back boost mode is lower. If we operated the converter in one mode operation, this is keeping always the operation in the back boost mode, then we will have an efficiency curve which would be like this shown in this continuous line here in red. So by switching to the back mode, we can increase the efficiency in this area and also by switching here to the boost mode, we can increase the efficiency and get a higher efficiency in most part of the operating range. Of course, we are interested in keeping this area here in which we have the back boost converter operating as small as possible. Well, this video is getting long, so we are going to stop here today. In the next video, we will see how to implement the uh, converter, how to generate the signals for the different switches, and we will show the simulation results. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any comment or question, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.